So I have to tar start with the Doge. Spencer, why is this rise? Does this have to do with Elon Musk coming up on SNL or is this something else? Look, it's anybody's guess what's driving the specific price action. I think that that's the primary culprit here. Um, you know, look, I mean, this is a, it's a meme coin. There's no, um, you know, it is a functional network. So we'll give it that credit that it does work. There's just no real users. There's no developers building on it. I mean, I've never taken an investment pitch of someone actually building on top of Doge. So, you know, I look at this as very analogous to the GameStop saga, um, except with the caveat that GameStop had a little bit, a um, little bit more going on to it. So why does Elon Musk love Doge so much then? He likes jokes. You know, he's a, he's a fun guy and he likes memes and Doge is the perfect target for it. Um, and, you know, in the current market environment, I'm not surprised that it's caught in the eye of more than one market participant. Okay, so let's talk about these other rallies and how do you separate out what's happening with Doge versus everything else? Yeah, fu fundamentals would be the easiest way to do it. So, you know, I mean, again, if, if we think of Doge as GameStop, then, you know, we could think of something like Ethereum or, or ETH the asset as closer to, um, you know, an Amazon of crypto finance or digital finance broadly. Um, and so, you know, whereas Ethereum seen a ton of fundamental traction and adoption and a lot of developers building on it, um, you know, Doge just doesn't quite have that. So, you know, I think that's kind of where we separate the, the wheat from the chaff here is, is who's actually getting developer and user adoption. Um, and Ethereum is, is certainly a top of the stack there. So talk about Ethereum and what's happening there. Obviously, we're seeing a massive rally. And again, you know, when this happens, so many folks just don't understand why. So what's driving it? Yeah, sure. So, so Ethereum has had, you know, obviously a fantastic run recently. I think there are a few near-term price catalysts that people are watching. Um, so there's a few improvements to the protocol, like EIP-1559, that just kind of adjusts, it improves the user experience in terms of transaction fees. Um, it also has a net effect of um, burning some of the ETH supply. So in theory, putting some upward pressure on price. You know, that's one upcoming catalyst. There's also the rollout of a lot of the uh, Ethereum scaling solutions, um, which has been much anticipated for a few years now. So those are finally on the horizon and hitting uh, real world deployment. And then we've got uh, the transition to ETH 2.0 that's on the horizon as well. So those are all kind of on people's minds. But I think that really, again, tying it back to fundamentals, you know, really the story for Ethereum is all around DeFi. I mean, this is the, the primary driver of, of growth and adoption within the Ethereum ecosystem. And so DeFi is, of course, decentralized finance. These are digitally native financial applications that are built on top of Ethereum that are seeing incredible traction over the past one, two years. So either way, we've seen a lot of volatility. Are we going to see that volatility continue when perhaps, you, you know, one might think, especially after the Coinbase listing, that maybe we would start to see some more stability? Yeah, listen, I mean, I think that all of these assets, right? We were having this conversation a couple of years about Bitcoin of when would it become less volatile? It is still volatile today. It's less volatile than it once was. You know, Ethereum is at relatively early stages of approaching gigantic markets. I mean, financial, global financial markets around the world, this is some of the biggest opportunity it could possibly be going after. It's showing incredible traction towards that objective. I think that we should expect to continue to see volatility going forward. You know, the, the longer of a track record it establishes in terms of building um, developer and user traction, the more we can expect that volatility to decline. But I don't think that that's going to happen over the next 12 or, or 18 months or anything like that. 